Father, this is your hour. Not mine. It's your hour. It's, it's. I don't want it to be mine. I want it to be yours. I surrender my mind, my mouth, and my muscles. I ask you, Lord God, by your grace to prove yourself again. Prove that you use feeble, flawed, finite vessels to do the unthinkable. Demonstrate your own power. Let the Shekinah glory of God continue to fill this room so that the presence of God would be prominent. The work of the Holy Spirit would prevail in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, save the unsaved. Call the unchurched to yourself. God, minister to each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to read a verse of scripture here in Matthew chapter 6 and uh, and one other. I'll mention a few in this discourse. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 says, Pray then in this way, our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see that? And then I want to read the 33rd verse in the same chapter. 33rd verse in the same chapter but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things come on say all these things all these things will be added to you. And then Romans chapter 14, Romans chapter 14, Romans chapter 14, the 17th verse, Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace. Come on, say righteousness, righteousness. And, peace and peace and joy, and joy. In, the Holy Spirit. in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, you, you may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Those of you viewing by streaming, stay with us for about 20 minutes, please, for this message from the Lord on high. I want to talk about campaigning for the kingdom of Christ. Campaigning. Come on, don't go slow. Don't be slow. Campaigning for the kingdom of Christ. Say it again. Campaigning for the kingdom of Christ. One more time so the others can join us. Campaigning for the kingdom of Christ. Brothers and sisters, I want to say to you today that I'm here on assignment, and the Lord has given me an instruction, an instruction to lead a campaign that only grace and mercy qualifies me to lead. I, I, I want to say that up front. That God has given me an instruction and an assignment to lead a campaign 
that I personally, in and of myself, don't qualify to lead. But he has given me this assignment and only grace and mercy qualifies me to lead it. I'm saying that just in case the thought enters your mind as I'm seeking to obey this assignment, who is he to lead such a campaign? When that question, if that question comes up in your mind, in your thoughts, remember that I told you up front, only grace and mercy qualifies me to lead this campaign. So when the devil brings it up in your mind, he might bring it up in big, bold, capital letters. Say with your own mouth, only grace and mercy. I'm telling you that up front. Only grace and mercy. Now, having given that disclaimer, let me get about explaining what this means and why it's such a lofty assignment. And I would suggest you probably would consider that if the Lord gave you the assignment, it'd be grace and mercy too. That, that might help you out a little bit. Uh, uh, if... if if, if the Lord gave you the assignment, it, you probably would need grace and mercy next to your name. In fact, even without the assignment, whether you know it or not, you need grace and mercy next to your name just to be here. This assignment was unsolicited. I didn't ask God for this, but in praying and seeking God, even in challenging circumstances, with much going on in my life, the Lord made clear to me this campaign. And it's going to be a three-month campaign. It starts in September, October, and November. And you are on the campaign team. Your response suggests that you might feel imposed upon. You may not be elated. But let me again suggest to you that any time you get a chance to do anything for the kingdom of God, you ought to be the most ecstatic person in your neighborhood. Everybody in your section ought to know you just got chosen by God to do something for the king and that ought to give you a level of excitement, joy, and, and enthusiasm. We are entering into campaign season the midterm elections are coming up we've got races being won run here in our county that'll be 
demanding much attention as people are vying for seats of influence and power to shape policies and to impact our communities locally and nationwide. There will be campaign signs and messaging in all forms of media. They will spare nothing. Signs will be on in the yards, nailed on fences, taped to telephone poles, billboards, radio ads, TV spots, social media will be flooded as campaigns candidate for certain people to take office and we will be bombarded and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars are being given and spent donated and dedicated to these campaigns and they will not be shy to announce who they favor they will spend money into the millions of dollars declaring this person is the best person for this seat, this position, this woman, this man, this party, this, and they will not be shy to promote the Republican agenda, the Democrat agenda, the conservative agenda, the liberal agenda, the right-wing agenda, the left-wing agenda, the extreme left agenda, the extreme right agenda. Whatever they believe in, you will know it. The question is, why won't the church make that kind of noise about Jesus? It's quiet in here now. Their whole rallies and thousands will show up and their enthusiasm will reek of religious fervor. And yet when it comes to the kingdom of Christ, church people are boring, apathetic, lackadaisical, not intense at all. We got, a, we got one schedule. I'll see you Sunday morning. Don't call me out on another night. Do not, do not raise an extra offering. I, I gave you my 10% or my 2%. But whatever I gave you, be satisfied with that. Don't expect me to rally, campaign, show up, witness, testify. I'm not, I don't have that kind of time. And the Lord is saying, I wish you would say the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. The, the Lord is saying, nobody can save your community but me. Nobody can turn your situation around but me me. Nobody can help your children but me. Nobody can lift up your family without me. For without me you can do nothing. I want to say again I've been assigned 
to campaign and to lead a campaign for the kingdom of Christ. And you have been drafted to be on the campaign team. You're still not responding. That should be the end of the sermon right there. You should already be demonstrating that you are a radical commitment to the kingdom of Christ. Whatever I've got to do, I'm on board. But we still are not responding. And let me say this. Donald Trump gets better response than Jesus gets if we're in his house. Joe Biden gets better responses at his rally than Jesus gets in his house. And you're still unresponsive. Can I tell you, that's why our grandchildren are going to hell. That's why our nieces and nephews are lost. That's why our schools are falling apart. Because people in church who should be campaigning for Christ are too apathetic, lackadaisical, nonchalant, uninvolved, unconcerned, and disinterested. I want to see somebody here who believes that the answer to the world's crisis is not a Democrat or Republican, not a conservative or liberal, but that name that's above every name. I said that name that's above every name. I said that name that is above every name. That name is Jesus Christ. He won't be on the ballot in Harris County. He won't be on the ballot at the state level. He won't be on the Democrats. He won't be on the Republican. But his name is still there. And he wants to be somebody else's savior. He wants to be somebody else's Lord. He needs to be somebody else's redeemer. He needs to be somebody else's way maker. He needs to be somebody else's leader. And if that happens, then we all get blessed. Because you can't do better than the kingdom of Christ. Oh God, tell your neighbor, the campaign is not just for folk outside the church and people in the world. We got to have a campaign to get people in church back excited about Jesus. We got to have a campaign in the pews because people at church have disconnected from the kingdom even though you're in the congregation. now uh, so this campaign that God has called me to lead and again I'm only qualified by God's grace and mercy my assignment is to inspire to introduce people to the kingdom of Jesus Christ, to inspire people about them, how amazing the kingdom of Christ is, and to instruct people how to pursue the kingdom of Christ and kingdom purpose. That's my assignment. And then to invite and include others. That's you. In this campaign, campaigning for Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Now, I, I don't want to assume that everybody here is already in favor of him. I would like to make that assumption. Uh, but, so I'm going to be campaigning inside and outside. Because you can be in the congregation and miss the kingdom. Now, I want to say to you that Jesus himself campaigned for the kingdom. Uh, and before he came in ministry, 
before he launched his own ministry, John the Baptist was campaigning for the kingdom. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, and John went out in the wilderness preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then Jesus in chapter 4, verse 17, began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, all authentic ministry is a campaign for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Then Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 6, when the disciples asked him to teach them how to pray, he said, when you pray, say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 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 thy kingdom slow you are, thy kingdom come, thy I'm trying to show you how to campaign, you're missing it. See, you're not a city in church like a Baptist. This ain't a Baptist campaign. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy Let me, okay, okay, come on guys. Thy kingdom come, 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 thy kingdom come. Can y'all learn from that? Come on. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And brothers and sisters, don't take that for granted because your carnal mind and your flesh are always adverse to the kingdom and always adverse to God's will. Which is why you got to beat your body into submission. Because the carnal nature in you will always have conflicts with the kingdom agenda. That's why you got to pray it all the time. Because if you stop praying it, you will stop practicing it. You'll stop pursuing it. You'll, you'll lose your passion for it. And that's why some of us don't have passion for the kingdom now is because you don't pray it enough. You got to make yourself pray it, 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 make yourself pray it. Stop cussing, make yourself pray it, make yourself pray it so you can stop getting drunk. Make yourself pray it, make yourself pray it so you can, oh God, regain your passion and your fire, maintain your enthusiasm. You got to make yourself pray it. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done. Because it's in the saying of it. Oh God. That you bring your mind into submission to the king of his kingdom. To the lordship of the king. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. If you don't believe me, miss a couple of days. It'll turn into two weeks. All right. All right. Oh, God. I'm... I'm trying to get to what the campaign is about, but I'm trying to say this to you, brothers and sisters, that, that you just miss praying a couple of days about the kingdom coming and God's will be done, and you'll be doing your own will, and you'll be doing it your way, and feel justified in doing it, and then you get mad if somebody reminds you.
because everything in our sin nature wants to have its own way. Now, you can't campaign for the kingdom unless you're committed to the kingdom. And one reason we're not campaigning for the kingdom to get others in it is because we're halfway just lukewarm ourselves. Okay, listen, you're not campaigning for a candidate you don't believe in. So that's why you're not a t-shirt wearing, rally going person to somebody else's campaign because you don't believe in them that much. But the ones who really believe, they got the hat, the trophy, the, the t-shirt, the, the, the bumper sticker, the, the stuff on the windshield. They'll drive across the country and, and seize the Capitol. And risk going to prison and still keep saying what they believe. Am I right? Because they totally believe that documented history. They go into prison still saying, I'll go again. And the leader not going. All he had to do was give the signal. Doctors, lawyers, school teachers, bus drivers, police officers came from across the country and said, we're here. I want to see where are the people that believe in Jesus like that. Where are the folk who are so enthusiastic about the Jesus who died on the cross for your sins to get you, um, come on, to purchase your eternal salvation? How excited, how enthused are you? Do you know who he really is? Do you believe in his kingdom? Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In a hurry. Now, the Holy Spirit is in the world today to campaign for the kingdom. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. This is Jesus talking in Judea, uh, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, in the uttermost parts of the earth. Acts chapter what? 1 verse 8. Jesus is saying when, when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to campaign for me. Because the Holy Spirit is in the world to campaign for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. Now ask a neighbor, is the Holy Ghost in you? Because if he's in you, he's in you to campaign. Let me give you a few reasons. Here's why. We must campaign for the kingdom of Christ. One, until a person is in the kingdom and living in kingdom purpose, they will never know their true selves. You can never be your true self outside of the kingdom of Christ. Impossible. You don't even know your real self until you are under the authority of God's kingdom in alignment with kingdom purpose. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> Our Father, say Father. Father means source. Father means source. Father means source. Father means source. Until you're in right relationship with your source, 
you can't know yourself. And your father is king. With a kingdom. Okay. Our father king. Hallowed be thy name. Our father king, thy kingdom come. Our father king, your will be done. See, until you are in right alignment with your father, source, you can't know your identity. Anybody disconnected from the father don't know their source. If you don't know your source, you don't know who you are. That's why most people are trying to be somebody that they're not. That's why we got. That's why. That's why they listen. That's why they can sell us all the name brands. You try. You trying to wear wear Mike? Wear wear Louis? I gotta. I gotta wear. I I, I got. I, I, I gotta, I gotta drive Mercedes. I gotta have this because you're trying to become that. Cause you don't know who you are. If you knew who you were, you wouldn't need somebody else's name to make you feel important. Oh God! Listen, I, I ain't got nothing against the design of fashion. I'm just saying, it ought not make you feel special. Anything else with somebody's name on it that makes you feel special, that means you're sick. Okay. Now, now. You got to know who you are. So people are out here detached from the kingdom. They don't know who they are. That's why they are so frantic and, and unpredictable. Because they don't have self-esteem. And they don't have self-esteem because they don't know who they are. Second, I got to move on. The more people we get connected to the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the more we save people from this false identity. And false self-perception. Number two, your greatest potential for success and prosperity is in kingdom purpose. Your greatest potential, write that down, for success and prosperity is in kingdom purpose. Write it down, write it down, write it down. That's your greatest potential for success. And prosperity is in kingdom purpose. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. Deuteronomy chapter 8 tells us it's, the, it's God who gives you power to get wealth. When, when you are in alignment with God, he gives you power to produce wealth. People don't know that. Even people in church don't know that. Because we think to get wealthy, you got to do it the world's way. And so you got people in the world saying, I'm not going to church because church people stay broke. Tell your neighbor, that's false campaign lies. You know people campaigning against you will lie on you. So the devil got all these lies out about God to keep people from voting for the kingdom. So people think that being in church, you got to be miserable and sad and can't wait to go to heaven because your God doesn't work down here. That devil is a lie. 
my Bible says if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, your bills get paid. You get your house note done. Because all these things will be added. And then is it God gives you what? Power to get wealth. Come on, say power, power. to get wealth. Say it again, power to get wealth. There's no such thing as prosperity gospel, but there is prosperity in the gospel. See how quiet y'all are? I I'm telling you, those are lies that the devil has out on the kingdom. And church people are continuing to perpetuate the myth. Come on, he gives you what power? To get wealth. Have y'all read that scripture? Where is it? Where? Who knows? See what I'm saying? Say? So tell you, you gotta know how to use your campaign material. You got a Bible with a concordance in it? In the back of your Bible? Look up wealth in the back of your Bible. Just put wealth. Look up wealth. It's going to take you to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. It's God who gives you power to get wealth. And he does that to keep his covenant. Read it. Look at it in your Bible. So when you're campaigning for the kingdom, you got to tell people the benefit. One benefit is you discover your true self. The second benefit is you discover your true potential in God. Do you see the Bible? Did you turn to it? Did you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Bible. At the, at the front of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Look at it because I want you to see it. What does it say? It is he who gives you what? Power, the ability to do what? To produce wealth. Read on. And so confirms his what? His covenant. That's kingdom. He gives you the ability to get wealth, to produce wealth. You ain't got a lot to get wealthy. You ain't got to cheat. You don't oppress people. God gives you the ability. They didn't teach you that in school, nor in church, nor at home. That means potential. So until you're in alignment with God's purpose, you'll never know your real potential. That's why you're satisfied with a job and a retirement. And people who are not in church are saying, I don't want to live broke and say I served God and then died. What's attractive about that? And all the folk in the world got all the money, all the land, all the gold, all the control, all the power, and we're praying just hoping Jesus comes back. Look at that verse one more time. Look at it again. Look at it again. Let's speak to you. Read it out loud. But remember, come on. The Lord your God. Remember the Lord your God. What? For it is he who does what? Gives you power. Gives you the ability to do what? To produce wealth. To get wealth. Come on, to get wealth. That he may what? Establish his covenant huh that he swore to your fathers to this day now I'm saying to you brothers and sisters that's in the same bible that says in the beginning God created heaven and earth 
That's the same Bible that says the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's the same Bible that says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I wish somebody would shout at me and say, I want wealth. No, come on. This time, say it like you mean it. I want wealth. Y'all are still too timid. Come on, shout I want wealth. See, see, see how, how y'all are still too nonchalant. I want wealth. My king wants me wealthy. My father wants me wealthy. If he did not want me wealthy, he wouldn't have gave me the power. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Come on, say, the power is in me right now to produce wealth. I have the potential right now to produce wealth. Y'all not helping me. I, 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 all this red over here, y'all not helping me. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at these red, these red, all this red over here. Y'all, y'all too, y'all too nonchalant. And you too broke now to be saying this. I, I need you on your feet, opening your mouth, saying, I have the power to get wealth. That's why our grandkids and great grandkids are not interested in church. Because we don't even know we have the power to get wealth and we're teaching them to go to school, get a degree, go to get a, get a job, make a living, and die. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, if that's all your God is about, I don't want that God. I'm not, I'm not interested in that kind of church. I'm not going to spend my life going to church every week for that. Tell your neighbor, we got to go on a campaign. We got to go on a campaign. And we have to educate people on what this campaign is all about. The kingdom of Christ is not just about going to heaven. The kingdom of Christ is about having power on earth to make a difference. Because you can't change the world if you're broke. Do me a favor. I got to hurry. My time is about up. Grab somebody and say, there are enterprises in you. No, no, grab them. Don't let them tell them where they're going. There are enterprises in you. There are enterprises in your family. Multi, multi-million dollar. No, 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 don't play. Come on, tell them. Multi, multi, multi-million dollar enterprises are in your veins right now. And God needs you to manifest it so the kingdom of God can win. Now, I got to close. I got to close. I'm, I'm late. Thirdly, I'm sure your maximum fulfillment is in the guiding laws and principles that lead to the abundant kingdom life. You can't be maximally fulfilled unless you live according to the life-giving principles and laws of the kingdom. And the laws and principles of the kingdom lead to the abundant life that Jesus came to give. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. People think that the abundant life is only available outside of the kingdom. But that's because we're not living the abundant life. If we live the abundant life and proclaim that and pre present that, then people say, oh, man, you get that kind of life hooked up with Jesus? Yes. 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 Yes, sir. You mean Jesus made that happen in your life? You mean Jesus Christ is the reason you're so successful? You mean Jesus Christ is why you're soaring? You mean that Jesus Christ is why you're elevated? You mean Jesus Christ is responsible for that promotion? You mean Jesus Christ... Help you grow your business, your enterprise. You mean Jesus Christ did that? You mean your joy, your peace, your happiness, your fulfillment, your contentment, all and your prosperity. You got all that wrapped up in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Where do I join? Go.
Glory to God. Glory to God. You ain't got to be broken, disgusted because you serving Jesus. The devil is a lie. You got potential you don't even know you have. The root word for potential is power. Influence. And ability. Oh God. I promise you, you only, listen, you only fulfill 5% of your potential at best. At best. At best. And the reason some of us not fulfilling our potential is because you got old rather than, listen, you got old. Say, I got, say, I got old. <laughs> and the older I got, the less I believe in my potential. Because you adopted the mindset of getting old. And in your mind, you've aged out of potential. Because the older you got, folks told you to stop daydreaming. So now you're too old, and they tell you, come back to reality. All that stuff you know about, that's, that ain't reality. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. But read the Bible. The Bible tells you that in your older age, latter ages, you flourish like the palm tree. <laughs> tell you, you're supposed to be stronger as you get older, not weaker. Your faith in God ought to be mature to the point that a thousand dollars won't settle for you no more. You, at, at this point, you ought to be talking about 50 acres, 100 acres, a neighborhood, because you've been with Jesus all these years. You, if wine could get better over time, what about you? Can I help you? Your body gets old, not your mind. Not your spirit. You are a spirit being in a body. Your body is not your real self. It's your spirit who's your real self. But you done checked out and made yourself to be your body. I'm not my body. I'm my spirit. My soul is not getting old. My body is getting old. But my soul is renewed day by day. Hey, who I wish I had somebody to shout with me in this house. Now, now, the kingdom is your only eternal hope. Your only eternal hope is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. If you're not in the kingdom of Christ, you are going to hell. There are two kingdoms and two destinations. And whoever your king is, you're going to be with him. There are two kings. Whoever your king is, you're going to be in the house. And the only way to the kingdom of Jesus Christ is by accepting him as your savior and Lord. Believing on his death, burial, and resurrection. That's entrance into the kingdom. But once you get entrance into the kingdom, you get access to the kingdom. Oh, God. You don't want to wait till your last breathing hour to, to, to enter the kingdom. I mean, that's better than nothing. But guess what? You missed out on the lifelong of access. Woo. I got to quit. I'm, I'm happy all by myself. Pack my stuff up, man. I got to quit. Look, I, I'm trying to say to you that, see, the kingdom has too much to give you access to. I'm closing. I got, I'm having fun. Even, tell them, it doesn't mean you don't have challenges. It does not mean you don't have challenges. But understand me, 
I, what excites me is seeing the king, my king, deliver on his promises. Even while I'm not perfect. With enemies, opposition, adversity, and all that, the king just keeps saying, but I got you. The king is that I want you to have that territory influence, that territory influence, that territory influence, that territory. And I got people who look like me mad and folk who don't look like me mad, but, but they can't touch me. Because my king is in charge of my life. See, when you seek for the kingdom of God, the king says, I got you then. If you're going to handle my business, I got yours. You missed what I just said. Pack me up, man. I, I, I said, my king, whenever you devote yourself to the king, the king says, well, I got you. No, 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 no. I, tell you, but stop playing it safe. Just go all out for the kingdom. And, and, and some of you may be like me. See, what keeps us from going all out to the kingdom is you're waiting to get perfect first. You think that, and the devil convinced you, you got to get your whole life together before you go on the campaign. He uses that because, no, you'll never go. Because guess what? The campaign is not for you. You ain't campaigning for you to be king. You're campaigning because he's king. I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on the one who died on the cross and got up on a Sunday morning. I'm bragging on him. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. He's the great I am. He's the... Oh, God. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every amen. I want the kingdom people to stand. I want the, 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 the king, I, because I'm calling you. Listen, you got to be on this campaign. It's a campaign. I'm not afraid to proclaim Jesus because I'm not proclaiming me. I don't save. My name is not on the ballot. He is the one you got to choose. Jesus Christ. I want every parent here to go home and say to your children, serving the Lord in this kingdom positions you for your best life he gives you power to get wealth and show them in the word of God campaign for the kingdom father we thank you for your word As we prepare to leave for today, help us to do it knowing that our greatest potential for success and prosperity is in your kingdom. That the only way we discover our true identity and know our true selves is in alignment with your kingdom and your purpose. And that our only eternal hope to have a life that's eternally blissful and happy is in the kingdom. And that true peace, true joy in the kingdom is through the Holy Spirit. Thank you. And as we prepare, as we prepare to launch this campaign for the kingdom, I pray that every person under the sound of my voice will see themselves winning souls to Christ, compelling others 
to enter through him. In the name of Jesus.